What is going on, MLW Network people? We are finally through a full series a slate of games. We've seen every single team play this year. Um, so I've got uh, a couple of great guys and some guests that are coming on. Um, first off, we got ECK Sports, of course, as usual. Hey, what's going on, guys? We also have Kyle, a.k.a. at Kyle, one Kyle Wagner on Insta. What's up? Go Scorpions. Yeah, we also have uh, a guest here, uh, Stalag. Or Stalag. Stalag. I, I don't even know, but <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Oh. No, it's fine. This is, the, this is the abbreviation of my name. This is the All right, name. what's your real name? Or I guess oh, your real yeah. name? Yeah, or not real name, your actual, your abbreviation. Um, Stalag Zegan. Stalag Zegan. Wow, that is a sick name. Okay. Huh. Um. So, yeah, we're, I figure we'll take this show game by game. We'll start out with the first game of the season. It's going to be a little refresher, of course, kind of getting everything into perspective. Um, so I'm just going to ask, you know, a few, a couple of questions about the game. So that way we can start our conversation about everything. I don't think we need a huge deep down breakdown of every single game. Um, if you want, you can check out uh, all these guys' Instagrams, uh, channels just for breakdowns on that. But I think where I want to go with this first question, I want to talk about the Wildcats um, this season. So in your opinion, as of right now, do you think that after the D-backs Wildcats game, I'll start with ECK, do you believe that the Wildcats are 100% the front runners, uh, and would you even go as far to say they will win the World Series this year? Yes, uh, I actually had them first in my power rankings um, at the start of the season before any games were played. I just thought that their roster was better than the Diamondbacks. I think Heath and Shima are too inconsistent, and then they had two rookies coming along. With, of course, Nork, who's amazing. But overall, uh, yeah, I think the Wildcats are easily the favorite. I might go, like, I don't think I'm going to go as far to say that, you know, they're definitely the favorites and that they're definitely going to win the World Series, but their chances are very likely. And they're definitely my World Series favorite right now, and I still have them winning the World Series. Kyle, what about you? Where, where do you fall on the Wildcats uh, as far as World Series champs? Do you think that they're the favorite, or do you think, you know, this was just kind of a one-off game? Honestly, man, just uh, taking a look at the whole series in general, uh, I can definitely see why this was a World Series rematch. Uh, if you do this a million times, uh, I would definitely see them, uh, the Wildcats, having uh, the favor of the split. Uh now, I also have the Wildcats as my favorite on the power rankings, and I actually had them, uh, you know, going all the way to the World Series and winning it just because, you know, of everybody stepping up. Nick Saylor had an amazing day on the mound as usual because we all thought he was going to slip up uh, or people were going to actually, uh, you know, sort of catch on to his uh, arsenal, but uh, it turns out... Um, that really wasn't the case. Uh, Jackson Pearson really had a good day. Mm. 273 average, one home run, four RBIs. Um, definitely was seeing the ball really, really well. Uh, didn't really see much from Ty Smith, uh, the rookie call-up, but um, I'm sure uh, over the next few series we'll be able to see more from him. But I think overall uh, it was just more down to the fact that this team is just much more cohesive. Uh, and I think over time, uh, we're just seeing that the D-backs are starting to have some uh, more vulnerable cracks that we didn't see before, uh, which we'll probably get to, especially with, you know, Norp's injury and the fact that Heath and Shima weren't really as present as they were in the past. Mm. Uh, it's like, where, where do you fall on this, honestly? Um, honestly, I think that the power rankings for uh, the Wildcats and the Diamondbacks are really close, and that it all depends on how Heath and Shima perform. But as you could tell from the first game, they weren't really on point, so I think that the Wildcats definitely might be a little bit ahead on the power rankings on first, and then Diamondbacks will be on second. And that uh, Ryan Kelly is kind of overpowered. Hmm. And overall, I think that... The World Series might just be another rematch, like Diamondbacks versus Wildcats. 
but I think it's definitely going to be another one of those really close games. Or the Wildcats just might, like, be on point and just, like, sweep it or something. I don't know. It's really kind of ner- nerve-wracking for Diamondback fans. Yeah. Um, speaking of nerve-wracking for Diamondback fans, um, I'm going to throw this over to Kyle and let you all comment. But are you really worried about the Diamondbacks now? Now, this is in context of the other games I think when we we were looking at it and talking about it kind of earlier, watching everybody comment on it, you know, we weren't really sure. But, I mean, looking at, you know, maybe the Mallards, looking at maybe the Eagles this year, I mean, are you worried about the D-backs' chances? Do you think that they might they may not even, I mean, they, they're going to have to see if they're fighting for a third or second seed, or do you still think they're the favorites for the one seed? This is where it kind of gets tricky now because um, obviously uh, I still think the D-backs, uh, you know, they're going to stay in that one the two spot in the NL. I don't really think that there's a huge drop-off in their game. Um, it's just the problem is just multiple things are happening at once. Obviously, North's health is a big issue because – you know, he disclosed in Discord that he had multiple lingering injuries, including a micro fra- fracture in his elbow. Um, we don't, you know, obviously he's going to play through it. He's a very resilient guy. Uh, we don't know how much that's going to impact, uh, you know, how well he pitches and, you know, how well he hits during the course of the season. Obviously, you're never going to have uh, another season like he had uh, last year. But as a result, you're going to have to see, you know, Trey Flood and Casey Bennett step up in huge ways. And obviously, if you're looking at somebody like Michael Shima, who only batted, uh, I believe, 230 last year, uh, which really wasn't that great for the team, uh, you know, you really have to uh, focus on Flood and Bennett much more, whereas uh, in the past you could focus on a core group of three guys so uh definitely i agree this is a little bit concerning for the backs nation but um this is just more of an opportunity for the younger guys to really step up i would like to see maybe experimentation with the dh rule where you can either uh, get flood or bennett some at bats either for shima or norp uh you know try to see Maybe you can uh, get them to uh, get their bats going and, you know, see what happens. Maybe they can get some runs going against, like, teams like the Mouds and the Eagles because uh, this NL race is wide open. Yeah, uh, my thoughts on it, um, based off this past series, I don't think that you can say that, you know, the Diamondbacks are in trouble, they need to hit the panic button. The Diamondbacks are still the best team in the NL. I mean, I still have them as the best team in the NL in my power ranking still, even though they just lost the series. But they just won the World Series. They still have a very talented player in Jimmy Lindor. If there's one thing that I'm worried about as a Diamondbacks, if, you know, if you're a Diamondbacks fan, it's not about how they played against the Wildcats. It's about Jimmy Norp's injuries. If Jimmy Norp is injured, that might be a problem. Because if you have Norp not playing at 100%, that might, that might hurt your team. I I really don't know what we're going to see in the future. We might see a situation where Flood pitches a game, Heath pitches a game, Nor pitches a game. Uh, we could even see, I don't know, Norp's really not feeling well. We could see Heath pitch two games. We'll really see what happens. It's even possible that uh, Flood takes over Heath as the number two. There's so many things that can happen. But this Diamondbacks team is a winning ball club. They find ways to win. And um, there's no way that they get below the two seed, in my opinion. Mallards and Eagles are great. They they play the Mallards next series. So I think they take care of business there. Slag, what do you think? Um, I mean, I basically agree with everything he said. And I do really think that the Mallards are going to have quite the good season this year. Because I think Robles is a very good pick. And um, just from the one game that they played, I think that he's adjusted to the league well and that he's going to be a really good pick um, in a couple of seasons. They're going to like look back and see how good of a pick that was. 
And I think that the Mavs are definitely going to make a huge comeback season. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And with this upcoming series between the Diamondbacks and the Mallards, I still think the Diamondbacks have a much deeper roster, uh, especially with the addition of Flood and Bennett, like we mentioned earlier. Um, you know, we'll get to the Mallards earlier, but I feel like the Diamondbacks in this situation have much less holes in this situation compared to before, uh, you know, where they only had a three-man lineup. And, you know, God forbid, uh, you know, one person goes down or multiple people go, go down. Uh, I remember in one game back in 2019 where they only had two players uh, during a playoff game. You know, that's a situation you don't want to be in. So um, I agree. This is a situation where, you know, the more people that can provide value during a regular season series, the better. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's head to the most recent series. I think uh, I think everybody is itching to talk about Mallards Cobras. Um, honestly, we all, all know what happened in the first game, um, and I, I think this is a question of: Is it possible in the future uh, to have a relief pitcher? Um, do you think that this was a good idea, just lacked execution, or is this in general always a bad idea? I know I have my opinion that um, I think it's a good idea, but I don't didn't ex- like the execution it, of it in the moment. Uh, what do you, what do you? Uh, I'll send it over to Lag. What do you think, buddy? Um, I think that um, a relief pitcher would be a really good idea, and that I thought. Um, that it was actually kind of just I was kind of laughing just watching Drew Davis take out Baranowski and then just get just let up so many points and walk. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, and it's it's kind of funny because uh uh you know Baranowski was really dealing in that first game. You know, uh he didn't really give up uh too many hits and too many walks during that point. And then it, it it's just it's just funny how one team decision kind of just snowballs into this huge mess, and then Sawyer Bean comes in, gets the next two guys out on strikeouts, including Robles, who was having a great day up until that point. And it's just like you know, it, it's just a matter of like who you put in that situation, if that makes sense. So it's kind of situational in that sense. So yeah. do I agree with that move? No. But y- you never know like who you're going to put in that situation. So I yeah. think you know it kind of really depends at that point. Yeah, I definitely think that Baranowski was doing a really good job and that Drew Davis's ego could be a big thorn in the Cobras team. I mean, so my thoughts. Well, so, sorry, you go. Uh, no, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, my opinion on this whole thing is the Cobras didn't use a relief pitcher thing here, and I'll explain why. If they were doing that, they would have had Drew Davis come in at the beginning of the inning, not in the middle of the inning. If they actually were planning to do this, they would have had him start the inning. And. My overall problem with the Cobras is this. I've said this many times. This is true in baseball. It's true in football, especially. Good teams make good decisions. Bad teams make bad decisions. The Cobras did not make a good decision in that game one. And I think Drew Davis was, I mean, I don't really know what he was thinking there. First of all, why did he start Baron in the first place? That's my real question. Now, and that ended up being a good move. But I was questioned why they had uh, Baron start game one in the first place because Baron was not good last year and Drew was pretty solid. So I didn't really understand that one. I mean, we we all kind of saw this coming, right? Like we we kind of have an understanding that Cobras have had a history of making bad decisions, right? Because they made the bad decision during the 2020 draft when they gave up that draft pick. They pretty much traded away what was possibly Chris Cheatham for Gus. 
And then uh, even then before when they uh, uh, pretty much got rid of Andy Duran for no reason, uh, gave him up to the Eagles where he pretty much did practically nothing because of an eye injury. And uh, they, they, they've done weird decisions in the past. Some of them have worked. Some of them haven't. But it's just, you know, Drew has always thrived off of the chaos and, you know, not knowing what you're doing. So I just, I don't know what we kind of expected from this team. And I worry that because of decisions like that, you know, that is going to have a negative effect on this team's success in the future. My point exactly. Because, as I said, good teams make good decisions, bad teams make bad decisions. And like you said, with that draft pick trade, how did the Cobras do that season? 5-10, and ten, missed the playoffs. You see what I mean? The Wildcats, yeah. in 2018, when they decided to get rid of both the Rulies and Zach Whalen, and they got Ryan Kelly and Zach Pirock, that was a good decision. Because they won, and they won the World Series. It goes yeah, to what I want to say. And guess who had uh, Zach Whalen originally before he went to the Eagles? The Cobras. It, yep. it's, just, it, it's just like, you know, it, it's just like they do a million different well, things. Well, Whalen was forced off think... the team, by the way. Drew said that on a podcast. Kyle forced him off the team. Okay, well, that was different then. But, yeah, I mean, it's just a multiple different things that happen. Obviously, you know, you can separate the decisions from, you know, how the team perform team performs on a day-to-day basis. We'll probably get to those games later. But it's just, you know, you you kind of expect that from Drew. And it's just kind of unfortunate. Yeah, and that's a big reason why the Cobras haven't won zero championships. Um, and, you know, you got to come up big in the clutch and you got to come up uh, with good decisions. And, in those situations. So I think, um, unfortunately the Cobras, I don't really think, I don't really think they have a shot to win the world series this year. Like they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. I could easily still see them finishing with like the two seed, but I I don't, I don't think they're going to win the world series this year. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough place for the Cobras. I think like that decision was kind of like, a midway. I remember uh, talking to Drew about like the relief pitcher pitcher idea, and I don't. I think the idea and the concept is not a bad idea at all. Um, it's just I think you're right. Ck is like if it's at the beginning of the inning, um, I think that's better. But it, the the fact that it was on a middle of the inning with uh, two runners on that's just that, that's just putting yourself in a tough position. Um, but I mean, if he comes in and deals and uh, looks like uh, you know strikes everybody out, he looks like a genius. Um, but you know, it, it didn't go that way. So it's it's a tough it's a tough decision for sure. Um, I'll go ahead and move on to the Mallards now. I want to start focus this specifically on Jordan Robles. Um, is Jordan Robles living up to the hype? Is did you see in this game that he really is one of the greatest draft prospects to ever grace MLW, or is he just going to be a really good player? Um, I'll start with ECK on this one. Absolutely. Great draft pick. Uh, it's only been one series. He's already looked really good. Um, he's pitching to a 1.8 ERA. He's got a home run, I think three or four RBIs. He's, he has a 500 batting average. He leads the league in average. Uh, he's second in OPS. His on-base percentage is crazy. He had 10 walks. He was hitting the ball well. He saw Barron decently well. Uh, he saw Sawyer decently well. So I think Robles had a really good series. And his swing is amazing. Though the only issue is um, he's got to stop throwing that changeup riser. Uh, I think he should just stick to throwing that the normal 70 miles per hour. So I think he should really just stick to that. Uh, 
and maybe even add a new pitch. But I think I think Robles has something good going. Well, yeah, uh, obviously, I think, you know, Jordan Robles, obviously a great pick by the Mallards. You know, probably one of the better wiffle ball players we've seen in the country. Um, you know, the stats don't lie. Uh, his slugging is already over a thousand. It's week one, and his pitching is pretty solid, too. Uh, but I think what you've seen in terms of, you know, the slower pitching, uh, you know, the struggling to, uh, you know, get used to the speed limit, uh, as well as, you know, getting used to MLW pitchers. You know, that comes with time. Obviously, Robles has played in several different leagues before. He's played out in Las Vegas with the Premier League Wiffle. He's also up in New York with Mid Atlantic Wiffle. So he's been all around the place. Um, I don't really think that adding one more league is going to do him any harm. Um, you know, it, it's going to take him a little bit, obviously. I think this is his one series where he kind of shakes off the rust, so to speak. And I definitely think in his next series, I think against the Diamondbacks, he definitely is going to try to at least kick into a high gear, I believe. But it's going to be difficult against the Diamondbacks. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, I think he'll definitely uh, try to do well, but uh, you know, against a team with the Diamondbacks, you never know how any other team's going to do. Because uh, last year the Diamondbacks never lost a series, so you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 I, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I think the the something I really want to talk about though. Is remember last year when the Mallards were playing the Eagles, they went into extra innings and they uh they didn't pull Caden for Bonham. Um, because of like the extra innings rule. But this time they did. They pulled him for Robla for Robles, but it was the same result. Walk off home run. So maybe Tommy's decision not to put in Trevor actually wasn't the worst thing. Well, yeah. Stalag, what do you what do you think about all this? I definitely think that Jordan Robles is living up to the hype, and that I think that after a couple games, once he um really gets settled in, that he's definitely gonna be really good. And I think that he definitely got he was really good on the mound. He was pretty good at batting, and I think that he could definitely be one of those dual threat players who's pretty good who's good at everything. I think the only thing that he needs to work on is decision making because you could see a couple times against the uh, Cobras, you could see he was having a hard time making decisions on defense when he had the ball. But overall, I think that he's a really good pick. Yeah, I I think uh, obviously MLW has that uh, unique wrinkle compared to uh, other leagues because you have that defense, right? Yeah, so uh, obviously, like, you know, other leagues uh, professionally. So, like, other other leagues out there, uh, they don't really, like, do any defense at all. Uh, some leagues do defense to, like, a certain extent. So if you're like Jordan Robles, you know, you have to add in, like, one more factor on top of that. So, uh, you know, that's probably a big hurdle he has to, you know, go over. but. Um, obviously, you know, we don't have any defensive stats uh, to uh, look at, such as fielding percentage or defensive efficiency. But if the Mallards can, you know, sort of just rein that in and have some good defensive plays, I think they can be just fine. We do have one source of defensive stats. Uh, there's a um, Something someone on Instagram named uh, MLW underscore stats. He has a fielding thing for fantasy, so that's pretty much all we have to go off. But I mean, it's something. Right, and I know like the Diamondbacks are probably one of the best ones. Uh, yeah, they're sort of up there with like you know the Wildcats, Eagles. So there's there's teams up there. I don't know where the Mallards are ranked on that list. But I can't imagine they're too high. So. Well, after last year, well, after last year they were number eight. I can tell you that. Oof. Yeah. So, 
you know, they, they can't get much worse than that. So, yeah, you know, definitely. they can definitely improve in some areas. And I think Jordan Robles can definitely improve along with them in that area. Thanks for having me. So thanks for having me. Yep, pleasure talking to you. Okay. Okay. Well, see you guys. Bye. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pleasure. Okay, let's see. Teacup, Agner's left shoelace, certified Yankees hater. Those are those are some names. I remember. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Keep it rolling. All right. So, uh, thank you for Slag for joining us. Now we're going to get into, I think we should get into... Preds Gators. Yeah, I want to get into Preds Gators. Um, I'm sure ECK is dying to get into this. But, <sighs> wow, what a absolute monster series from Brennan Russell. What an absolute monster series from the Preds. Does, I mean, looking at the Wildcats, we do think they're number one. But uh, do you think that the Preds have a good shot at beating the Wildcats in not even one, but two series this year. I'll start with you, ECK. Well, um, so are you are you talking about like their regular season series? I would say regular series and then also postseason, like beating. Oh, the okay, I see what you mean. Um, hmm. you know what? I wouldn't rule it out. I definitely wouldn't rule it out. Uh, yeah, Russell was outstanding. Warda was outstanding. Holly was pretty good and Crashin. Crash was great in the mound. Uh, McGlade was pretty good as well, but um, I could I could see it happening. Like it's not something I couldn't see happen. Like um, I definitely think they're the second best team in the AL. Uh, I had them I think number five on my preseason power rankings, maybe number four. I saw the talent there, and it clearly showed against the Gators. Now the Gators aren't really that great of a team. Like they're pretty good, but. You know, they definitely showed their weaknesses. But I really I, – I could see the Preds winning against the Wildcats possibly in in a series. I really could see it. Though I do worry about Russell's matchup against Kyle. I don't like that one bit. Russell doesn't really do well versus Kyle most of the time. He also doesn't do well versus Daniel. So I don't really know how well he'll do the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle, how about you? Uh, well – I, I would give it to the Predators on this series. They definitely uh, showed off against the Gators. Um, let me pull up their game results here. Uh, they Three played to two, nine to one, and yeah. six. They scored uh, eighteen runs compared to the Gators ten. So overall, that's a plus eight run differential. That's pretty solid. But I think. Um, this is more of the Gators pitching just deciding to implode on itself uh, rather than uh, confirming what we already know in the Predators that they can really hit pretty good. Um, obviously, it's good to see uh, uh, players like Ryan Cratch and Alec Warda really see the ball well in this series. Brennan Russell obviously seeing the ball well. Um, I would definitely like to see more from Stephen McGlade, especially since he has a four, 450 ERA right now, uh, and his walks are a little bit up at the moment. Um, and obviously, I would like to see more from uh, Mac Holly. I wasn't really impressed by him, um, especially with the fact that even though his uh, walks were up, I just didn't really see. Uh, a lot of presence from him in the box. So, obviously, they got the Wildcats coming up. Uh, does that really give me any reason to believe that they would uh, defeat them next week? Probably not. 
uh, especially since the Wildcats are really good at playing in neutral sites, um, especially since they're playing in Toledo, one of the games. So uh, the Wildcats, I think they should be okay in this series coming up. And I really want to believe that the Preds can do it with the pitching that they have, but I don't think they can. Yeah, I I think the Wildcats take that series two to one. I think most people would agree with me. Um, I think it's going to be a fun series to watch, but I think that the Wildcats barely take it two to one. Yeah, um, there's just a lot of people that would say, oh, the Preds could probably sneak in a series win here, especially with all the momentum, but I – Definitely would say the Wildcats would take it two to one here. Um, I don't see the Preds uh, winning their next series at all, but I could definitely see them at least gaining the two spot uh, and having the three spot as their floor, um, especially with the Cobras. Uh, it's just the depth that I kind of worry about because. Um, Obviously, behind uh, Cratch and Ward, they don't have a lot of hitting depth. And they only have Cratch and McGlade as their pitchers. So I would love to see more hitting depth from players such as Ramirez or uh, McGlade. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for in the coming weeks. All right. Now we saw from the Gators, not a good game. Right now, Kyle. Do the Gators miss the playoffs? Uh, I had the Gators missing the playoffs by a slim margin when I was doing my power rankings. And when I was talking to you in our draft video, I pretty much gave pretty clear reasons why. Uh, last year, uh, if I look up their team ERA, they had a team ERA of about 5.3. Uh, and it was pretty abysmal. Uh, it actually no, it was around three point two seven, uh, which was already not great. And then now, if you look at the Great Lakes Gators ERA now, that's up above four point seven with Brendan Jorgensen already in the tens. So, uh, their pitching has become more unreliable. And not only that, but uh, they've only scored like one run in one of those games, uh, which just shows that they're lacking the depth necessary to give their pitchers some run support. So uh, that really, really means a lot. Uh, If you are a Gears fan, just looking at this team, I know we talk a lot about hitting depth. I know we talk about guys one through three hitting. Uh, I know Jorgensen has been scuffling a little bit uh, while Zerlag has really been improving. Um, I would love to see Jorgensen and the rookie Harris definitely stepping up for this team uh, because otherwise uh, they have to face teams like the Eagles coming up. And we know how the Eagles uh, like to attack the zone a lot. Uh, They want to get to, they really want to get really, really quick outs. Um, and that's not good for a team that is already on their heels. So um, if you're a Gators uh, fan, I would definitely be pretty concerned, especially on their hitting side. Yeah, you know, the Gators just uh, – I'm pretty concerned. I had them missing the playoffs, I think, by a game at the, uh, at the beginning of the season – And I still stand by that. You know, they didn't look good whatsoever today. They gave up 18 runs. Uh, It's a lot of runs to give up. And Jorgensen was really bad. Uh, Cheatham was okay, but, you know, he wasn't the best. But, you know, he was was pretty serviceable. So, you know, Zerlag, though. Zerlag was fantastic. I, I heard a lot of people saying that Zerlag should get out on the mound. You know, I wouldn't hate that idea, especially if, if Jorgensen continues to struggle. But I I think Cheatham, and, you know, Cheatham is, is going to be good this year. I think this was just him kind of getting the rust off. Um, 
giving the rust off to Russ. And, you know, the Gators, their hitting is, is like, you kind of like it because, you know, Cheatham's a great hitter and so is Erlag. But Jorgensen, extremely inconsistent. And Reese Harris hasn't really faced, like, that much, you know, fantastic whiffle ball pitching. So, uh, yeah, Gators definitely missing the playoffs, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think what really uh, separated this Gators team from their 2020 form, especially, is not only the speed limit, you know, playing of an effect, but it was just the fact that they just don't have a lot of movement on their pitches anymore. It, it just feels like a lot of their pitches are flat. Um, Cheatham's super curve doesn't really move as much as we thought it would. Um, I'm even looking at uh, players like Jorgensen, and they're just not getting a lot of ground balls. Most of their hard hits are in the air. Um, it's just difficult to look at this uh, pitching duo right now and think that uh, you know they'll be solid because if you are a wiffle ball team, you want to make sure you can keep the, uh, the ball on the ground and you can get strikeouts so that when uh, the hitting side comes up, they can actually provide run support for you. So um, you have an Eagles team that can suddenly hit better. And then you also have the Diamondbacks coming up later on in the year. And those are two suddenly better hitting teams, which are not looking good for them. So I would definitely be worried for them. And something really needs to change soon if they want to make it into the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Another problem. Why is Zerlak still betting third? Like, why is that Why is that happening? In the IG Live today, I'm not going to, like, say anything about what happened, but because Reese Harris was there, he was betting fourth. Like, why? He's a really good player. He was great against the Predators. He was so much better last year, and he's a much better hitter than Jorgensen is. That makes yeah. zero sense to me. Especially since he's a lefty. That throws off, uh, you know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, we have... Zach Whalen batting third, but the difference is, you know, he doesn't really provide that spark that, you know, say Daniel Schultz or Dallas Allen does. If we have Zerlag batting like the leadoff spot, for instance, that changes because right away you're facing a new dynamic of a lefty coming up as opposed to just another righty batter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, that would be huge and just throwing pitchers off and you know possibly adding another run and giving your pitchers some cushion whereas before that was impossible yeah well they really should go with the lineup of Cheatham then Zerlag and then uh Jorgensen and they've actually never had that lineup before they started out 2020 going Jorgensen Zerlag Cheatham and then they kind of switched their life and cheat them. And then at the start of 2021, they started batting cheat them in the leadoff spot. And since then, they haven't changed it. Yeah. And uh, obviously, we could talk about Reese Harris a little bit because obviously, um, I was watching uh, uh, I was watching NWA recently where the Bajas were playing the Bobcats. And he didn't really even look that good in the that NWA series either. Oh, I like, didn't watch that yet. Yeah, I, I don't know. He didn't really get that many hits. I think he only got like a few hits. Um, overall, he looked kind of rusty. And I don't know how much his wiffle ball play in NWA is going to translate over to a new league, uh, kind of like how Robles is. But if he can get that swing back... Uh, like we saw in the NWA where he hit seven home runs and had that 435 average, uh, you know, that would be a huge asset to a team that really needs hitting because their pitchers are just doing so awful right now. But right now, if I am the Gators, I'd be looking for a player possibly on either the free agent block or the trade block where 
I could possibly trade a draft pick away and, you know, hopefully I can get either a pitcher or maybe another hitter. See if I can get some depth in my league, in my you know, uh, roster. Uh, yeah. Call me crazy, but you see the Eagles and the, you know, the Diamondbacks have flood in your guidance who really should be pitching, but aren't. I mean, that could be a possible trade. I mean, I know neither manager would probably be willing to do that, but I mean, if you think about it, it could happen. Yeah. And you, you got to wonder, like, what, what if um, the Gators would have drafted like a Trey Flood instead of a Reese Harris? You know, who they should have drafted. Yeah. Trey like, we, we wouldn't, would Trey Flood take over Jorgie's spot in the rotation at some point? You know, would he be able to, uh, hit in that situation, but or were they just more enamored of having another lefty hitter in a lineup where they could possibly just have more depth anyway? Um, you know, that's something that we would have to talk to Zerlag about because I'm sure he would have some good information on the decisions he made, but uh, that's something we can definitely discuss about on a later time. Sure. All right, let's get into the last series, which there's only two teams left out of uh, everyone we talked about. So let's get into the Magic Eagles series. Um, There's a lot of takeaways from this. I first want to start with the Magic side of things. Um, I think that this team is supposed to have kind of a big three. Um, Chadwick... Agner and Bonham but uh, is this really a big three do we really believe uh, in the magic this year um, I'm not going to say maybe maybe do they miss the playoffs are they going to barely squeak in is it just going to come down to the Cobra's magic again to see who decides or are they going to bring this is not up? a big three this is a big zero oh. and I've always believed that this is a big zero the the Chadwick and Bonham are too inconsistent for me. Agner is not part of a big three. Agner is not, you know, Agner is a good hitter, and, but and like he is like solid, but he wasn't he even there last series, was he? Three. What? He wasn't even there last series. No, no, he wasn't there. They went with Jackson. But, yeah, um, you know, Agner was like. Just too inconsistent for me. Even Wiffle's statement said that in his power rankings video. Just way too inconsistent. Not that good. Oh, he's home run or bust pretty much, I feel like. And uh, Chadwick, um, he has a current streak of 13 games without a, without a home run. So for all those people who you know still believe he's a power hitter, it's not really that way. So, you know, these are guys with talent. You know, Bonham is probably... If you want to count it like, you know, a big whatever, it's probably a big one with Bonham because uh, Bonham's still a good hitter, sort of, and he's a good pitcher as well. But this is definitely not a big three. It's a big one at max. Yeah, I, I see this team as living and dying by Chad, Chadwick and Bonham. And if – Bonham and Chadwick don't perform to the best of their ability, as we saw in the Eagles and Magic series. They will lose this game because obviously we see from Liam Jackson, we see from Jordan Curdy. As much as I hate to offend the King Curdy Club, like they're they're not really as effective as you think they would be in those situations. Like they have a team batting average of 150 right now. Like that is worse than what they had last season at this time and despite the fact that they have a team era of 0.84 right now they've only given up what two runs three the whole season compared to the one run they actually scored yeah or three runs i think yeah they scored two runs and the eagles scored three yeah don't let that fool you because the eagles got multiple hits they have three people batting over two, 250 or over. So don't let that fool you. What's, yeah, what's seriously. It, it's, it's, it was a really, really close game overall. Daniel Schultz just completely just shut the door on everybody. 
I I don't know what Trevor Bonham was really supposed to do out there because even he let out uh, costly home runs. I know he let off a walk-off home run, the Blade Walker, who's now on the injured list for the rest of the season with a torn deltoid. So uh, that's definitely horrible. But the one stat I want to kind of touch on is Team Whip because it's up over two right now. And Jason Chadwick is pretty much walked more people than given up hits and uh, given up uh, strikeouts right now because he's given up nine walks compared to the seven strikeouts and the five hits. So yeah. really, if we're talking about uh, this magic pitching trying to carry the team, they're not really doing a great job at it, but uh, they're going to have a really tough battle against the Cobras coming up. And I think yeah. this is because, yeah. like, you know, you have not only a full roster, but also you have uh, players like Baranowski, players like Sawyer Bean, who are going to be waiting in the wings and are going to attack this team. And I just feel like the Magic are going to get completely blown out of the water. Yeah, I, I don't think the Magic are making the playoffs. Uh, I still have hope for Bonham as a pitcher. And I thought Chadwick did a solid job. Uh, but, yeah, like you mentioned, nine walks. I mean, like, while he had some success, I just don't think he looked great out there. Um, that, that's just my opinion. So I don't, I don't really think the Magic are looking that good this season. I think you guys can probably agree with me on that. Um, I, I think, I mean, they have talent. I, I just don't see them going anywhere. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how... The Magic have always found ways to sneak into the playoffs. It's mostly just because of one team person that just pops up out of nowhere and just carries them to success. Like we had Chadwick in 2020, we had Huck in 2019, and then Bonham with the trade in 2021. Like it's just unless they make a move for a really solid hitter that goes off and absolutely kills everything he touches in like the later half against like the Wildcats in the Predators, for instance. You're looking at trouble for a Magic team that doesn't really hit much. And if the pitching is not on, they're pretty much not going to do much for the rest of the season. Yeah, this is a this is a scary time for Magic fans. I know Dark is quivering in the background uh, behind his memes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's get into on the other side. Let's go to the Eagles now. Are the Eagles the number one team in the NL, even with the D backs playing? Probably the number one team. Are the Eagles the favorites right now to win the NL? You know, I, I, no, I, I still think it's the D-backs, but if this Norp, like, if Norp is actually injured and, like, things aren't going well, then yes, they are. I currently think the Eagles are the favorite for the two seed. I think the Mallards for the three seed and the Gators for last in the NL. Um, I think the Eagles are looking really good. Their offense, I think I overrated their offense a little bit at the beginning of the year because I sort of, Sort of realize that, you know, Dan isn't what he was offensively. Dallas is a good offensive player, but he's not, you know, great. He has a 500 OPS, which isn't good whatsoever. But he got a few really good hits. Waylon, he, I think he, he only struck out once this past series, so he was actually a good impact. But then again, it was on Mother's Day, and Waylon on Mother's Day is really good, so I'm not really surprised. And... Oh, uh, your guidance. Your guidance was fantastic. You know, they have guys that put the ball in play that gets hit, that that you know get hits. That's the difference between them and the Magic. Is they have guys who get the ball in play, get in hits and stuff like that. The only reason why the Magic were able to score two runs is off walks. They didn't earn those two runs. Dan gave them those two runs. 
The Eagles earned the three runs they scored in the series. The Magic did not earn those two runs. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at this uh, Eagles roster right now. And the X factor that uh, really makes me happy about this Eagles uh, lineup is just their pitching is so good, uh, especially when you have a team ERA of 0.53. But uh, I'm going to go in a different direction with this Eagles team. I feel like they can be a dark horse for the number one seed if, if things go the right way for them. And what do I mean by that? Well, obviously, you have Blade Walker, who is going to be out for the rest of the season. That is a huge loss. If Blade Walker were to be healthy for this whole season, I could definitely see him as an MIP candidate because he has probably one of the best swings in the league, and that showed when he hit that walk-off home run in that uh, final game in the series versus Trevor Bonham. I've said it before, I've ranked him highly in my top 40 for a reason, and that is exactly why he he's really done wonders in the short time he's been in the Eagles organization. But let's talk about the rest of the team, all right? You have Dallas Allen, who's obviously going to find his footing here in the 2022 season. That's just going to be the way it is. Obviously, he's not going to be the guy you turn to to hit the ball, I don't think, uh, especially since he only hit three home runs last year. But I think he's going to be a nice set table for either Daniel, Schult- Daniel Schultz or Landon Urgaitis to uh, knock in those runs. And then you have a guy like Zach Whalen who's able to uh, you know, provide some uh, spark plug offense here and there uh, whenever they need it. But really, their pitching – tandem of Daniel Schultz and Dallas Allen is probably one of the best in the league. Um, I've probably said so far, if you have two uh, players whose ERAs are below one, that is by far the best pitching duo in the league. And whereas, you know, Jonah Heath, he has some vulnerable spots. I don't think I see any vulnerable spots in Dallas Allen, just because he mixes his pitches so well. He has good arm slots, uh, has control of the speed limit, and does not really have many walks. He only gives up uh, five walks uh, over nine Ks, which is really, really good. So if I am an Eagles fan, I am out for blood. I am looking to win every single series I possibly can. And if the D-backs falter, which could be possible if Norp is not healthy enough. And, you know, if the D-backs show cracking, cracks in their depth, because it's possible, uh, it's very hard to repeat as World Series champs in this league. I could see the Eagles definitely being not only the NL favorites, but definitely uh, NL division champs as well. Yeah, I for sure agree with you on that one. Uh, I think the Eagles are looking really good right now. Dallas Allen was a huge surprise to me. I did not expect him to do as well as he did. Like, I knew that, you know, he's like a solid pitcher. He had some good pitches. But I had no clue that he was going to be as good as he was. So I think if you're um, if you're an Eagles fan right now, you have a lot to be looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Like, especially since with the team they play next, which uh, I believe it will be the Gators, it's going to give them more of a reason to actually, uh, you know, pound the hammer even more, so to speak. I think they can reasonably go for the first sweep of the year, don't you think? And the Eagles right now don't really have that one player that you can just really rely on. Um, I, even though your greatest has been big, but – I'm talking like come up and hit a home run. Uh, they, you can they, they rely on Daniel Schultz for years. Dan, Daniel Schultz yeah. hit like a walk off home run in 2019 to win the division for them. They've always relied on Daniel Schultz. 
Yeah, they have. But I don't know. Daniel Schultz has gotten worse hitting wise every year since 2018. So that's something I worry about. I I mean I don't think Daniel Schultz's job anymore is to be that hitter because he drafts guys who can hit for him. Right. I know that Zach Whalen is always there uh, to hit because he always hits the apparent home run when you don't think he does. Right. Uh, he drafted Landon your guy is for a reason. Uh, I know he drafted Dallas Allen for a reason because he still has that pop somewhere. So if you can find a player who can make that happen, it'll probably be one of those three. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, I, I really like the Eagles supporting cast for Dan. I think Dallas looking great. Uh, Blade did look great, but he won't obviously be there. But you got Zach uh, and uh, Landon, who looked exceptional. Yeah, I swear, if they bring Neil and Clayton to that series. Oh, my God. I, I oh. want to see Clayton hit one more home run, but that that's it. Yeah, obviously, Clayton, when he retires, he'll be an MLW Hall of Famer if the Hall of Fame exists one day because yeah. he won the World Series with them in 2015, but his prime is definitely over. Same with Neil Smith. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, Neil Smith never had a prime, so it's not like his prime really ended. Yeah, he just had hits. Yeah. <laughs> Home runs. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up um, for everything going on. Uh, overall, a really good slate of MLW games. Uh, the next four games, gosh, I think we're going to have to help me out with this. It's Gators-Eagles, which is just going down to today. Um, so it's Gators-Eagles, Predators uh, versus um, Wildcats. Then you got Ga- – you uh, already said that one. Mallard's D backs and uh, Cobra's Magic. It's all the fifth slate series for some reason. That's interesting that Cobra's yeah, Magic then, are this uh, early. We got a Pred Wildcats and Polito, so that's going to be interesting. A lot of, lot of good stuff. Uh, stick with us for more content. Uh, I know each of us individually post different videos. Um, I know we're going to get, hopefully, AJ will get on here. I know he just posted something about the D bags. ECK also does great breakdowns of the Preds games. Kyle has good stuff on his Insta, specifically related to power rankings and also just good game recaps. So all of us have content coming out, so make sure you check out our links in the description. And, yeah, we will see you guys next time. See you guys next time. Peace.